Well, it's certainly been a bleak few years for the left in the UK. It's quite clear that Keir Starmer's Labour Party is a washout. It's now a party virtually indistinguishable from the Tory party when it comes to substantive issues on policy, on the economy, on immigration, on the European Union, you name it, Keir Starmer's got a policy that is virtually identical to the Tory party. So, what are left-wing voters in the UK supposed to do? Just throw up our hands in despair? Are we supposed to just vote for Keir Starmer anyway? Because he might, and that's a big might, he might just be possibly better than the Tories, just marginally. Um, he keeps claiming that he will do what the Tories do, but he'll just do it much more efficiently. And of course, that's what we all want. We just want what the Tories are doing. We just want those Tory policies, but done more efficiently, as he and his front bench like to tell us. But for those of us who don't want Tory policies just implemented more efficiently, is all hope lost? Well, I think not. I think there are green shoots, or at least there is a green shoot, which should give us some hope that possibly all is not lost in terms of making sure that the left in this country, and there's a lot of us, that we still have a voice that we still have some sort of platform within the Westminster system where our voice is heard and our beliefs and our motivations are reflected in the national conversation. Because at the moment they're not. What is this little glimmer of hope that might possibly be there if we decide that we want to exploit it? Well, Let's start with the story of this woman. A Jewish socialist. Jo Bird was a one-time Labour councillor in Wirral. She was hounded out of the party, and by hounded, I do mean hounded, as a result of malicious and vindictive and totally unsubstantiated accusations of anti-Semitism. But Jo... When she decided to leave the Labour Party, she left it in style, and here she is. My values on work have not changed. The Labour Party has changed from the party that I joined in 2015. It's become nasty, toxic and humourless. The leader of the Labour Party writes in the Sun newspaper, re-traumatising the bereaved communities most unnecessarily. And we have seen this evening Labour voting with the Tories, this is an unholy alliance and it's not going to go well. Well, there's few of us could disagree with what Joe had to say there about Keir Starmer's Labour Party. Joe then went on to stand as a Green councillor and she won her seat, her council seat, as a Green councillor. The Greens then selected her to be the Westminster candidate in Birkenhead. Fair enough, you might think. Successful councillor, popular when she was a Labour councillor, popular now as a Green councillor, would seem to be a perfect choice to fight the Westminster seat and be looking at becoming an MP. So this was announced that Joe Bird was their selected candidate for the Birkenhead seat and, well, all hell broke loose. The onslaught of criticism... Um, you'll recognise many of the names, many of the players from the so-called Labour anti-Semitism crisis. But they've decided that they're not happy with hounding people out of the Labour Party, who they don't agree with. These same players have decided that they're going to carry on that onslaught into rival political parties. First of all, we have Lee Harpin, a uh, gutter tabloid journalist of just the worst sort. Um, let's just have a little look at his resume, why don't we? 
Audrey Huey, who was nominated as one of BBC Radio 4's 100 Most Influential Women of the Century for defending women from sexual abuse in the workplace, was targeted by the Jewish Chronicle with a litany of lies and falsehoods reported by Lee Harpin, ex-News of the World journalist arrested in connection with the phone hacking scandal. Findings, and this was findings from an IPSO investigation, the findings make clear that the reporting of the Jewish Chronicle and journalist Lee Harpin fall far below the professional and ethical standards expected of journalists working today, particularly as pertains to accuracy and fact-checking, the most basic principles of reporting. The Jewish Chronicle, its editor Stephen Pollard and journalist Lee Harpin have apologised to Nada El Sanjari, a school teacher and local counsellor, over a number of articles they published last year. They have also agreed to pay her a substantial sum in libel damages as well as her legal costs. So, there you go, that's Lee Harpin and what a piece of work he seems to be. So, continuing his illustrious career as a journalist, Lee decided that this story of Joe Bard being selected to stand as a parliamentary candidate was just the type of story that he wanted to pursue. So, in pursuit of this story, he decided to approach a, a group, but not a group within the Green Party. He decided to approach a group within a rival political party, a group called the Jewish Labour Movement. Now, the Jewish Labour Movement, you may recall, was a major player in the so-called Labour anti-Semitism crisis not only just a major player, a major instigator in that wholly fabricated affair. But anyway, Lee decided these would be a good people to go and get comment from. The headline reads, Greens announced Joe Bird as prospective parliamentary candidate. Jewish Labour Movement National Chair Mike Katz asks, Do the Greens really think she's fit to be an MP? By Lee Harpin, who are this group called the Jewish Labour Movement. The Jewish Labour Movement was revived in 2015 to battle Jeremy Corbyn, the electronic intifada can reveal. A right-wing organisation with intimate ties to the Israeli embassy, the Jewish Labour Movement claimed to have been affiliated to Labour for a century, but a transcript of an undercover recording obtained by electronic intifada cast doubt on this narrative. It indicates that the dormant Jewish labour movement was revived by political allies of Israel as a weapon against Corbyn, the left and the wider Palestinian solidarity movement. As Matt Zarb cousin points out, this is a totally preposterous angle to take. Matt Zarb cousin says, In a democracy, who is fit to be an MP is decided by the electorate. As much as the Katz faction want to stitch up selections in their own party, their control freakery doesn't yet extend outside of it. Clearly, elections as a concept is difficult for the Labour right to fathom. In other words, it's up to Green Party members who they elect to be their candidate. It's up to the electorate in that area as to whether they wish to give them their vote. It is not up to the Jewish labour movement. The Jewish labour movement are not gatekeepers. They have no say in our democracy about who stands as a candidate as an MP and who doesn't stand as a candidate. That is not their role. But I mean, having the Jewish labour movement, having completely corrupted the candidate selection process within the Labour Party, and now looks as though they want to carry that over and seem to feel they can corrupt the candidate selection process in rival parties as well. That is just delusions of grandeur and way, way overreach from that particular organisation. Well, the Jewish Labour movement's response was nothing if not predictable. The Jewish Labour movement posted... In March, we wrote to the Greens to express our concern that they were harbouring 
people who had been expelled from Labour for supporting anti-Semites. Now they've doubled down and made one of them a parliamentary candidate. This is an appalling decision. Don't you just love the word harbouring in there? As though these people are somehow fleeing from justice. But the reality is, they're actually looking for sanctuary. They're actually looking for protection against the bullying, harassment and intimidation coming from groups like the Jewish labour movement. The attacks on Joe Barr didn't stop with Harpin and Katz. Another combatant and entered the field, Rebecca Feiler, the press officer for Hope Not Hate, uh, she posted, The Green Party must decide whether to tolerate or kick out the cranks they absorbed from the Labour Party. Right now, it's looking like they're happy to continue to promote these people and create a home for them. Shameful. As Aaron Bastani succinctly responded, This is how a staff member at Hope Not Hate conducts themselves online. The idea that a left-wing Jewish woman who is critical of Israel should somehow be blocked from actively participating in politics shows how undemocratic and authoritarian some on the Labour right are. The onslaught wasn't finished there. Enter a Labour councillor who also decided to attack Joe Bird, this left-wing Jewish woman. Joshua Garfield, who represents Labour as a councillor in Newham, East London. I look forward to eradicating the Greens from Parliament at the next election. Labour councillor sparks online backlash among would-be voters for choice of language. Joshua said, The Greens welcoming expelled Labour activists with open arms tells you everything you need to know about their values. No, Joshua, I think your choice of language tells us everything we need to know about your values. So you might ask yourself, why this frenzied onslaught against this solitary left-wing Jewish woman who had the temerity to leave the Labour Party, to stand as a Green councillor, to be elected as a Green councillor, and then the effrontery to actually put herself forward to be an MP for the area that she lives in and even worse to be selected to be the Green candidate for the area she lives in. Why were they all just going batshit mental? Well, the reason is who she will be standing against in that particular constituency. And that person is a darling of the Blairite Labour right, and that person is Alison McGovern. But the kicker here, what really had them just demented, is that the polls indicate that Joe Bird could win that seat. Based on the local council elections, and Joe's popularity in the area as a councillor, there is a very good chance that Joe Bird could win that seat. Absolutely humiliating a uh, Blair right-wing candidate, and we understand a very personal favourite of Keir Starmer. So that's the reason for the pure mad mental onslaught on Joe Bird over the last few days. Now, Zach had a very straightforward, no-nonsense response to this craziness that was happening online after the announcement of Joe Bud's candidacy was made. Zach posted, There's been five Jewish people in leadership positions in British political history. I'm really proud to be one of them, and I'm proud of the role the Jewish Greens play more widely in the Green Party. Now, let's go get Joe elected in Birkenhead. There was no apologies here. There was no quarter given to the lies and the smears and the attacks and the bullying and the intimidation. Joe was the choice of the local Green Party and he was not going to be intimidated by these people in the same way that we saw some in the Labour Party 
intimidated by this kind of pile on. There's no environmental justice without social, racial and economic justice too. Our country badly needs a redistribution of wealth with a tax on the super rich and to bring our services back into public ownership. You can help make this happen. It's just so refreshing to read that. There's so many of us on the left in the UK and what Zach actually says there, that is what we believe, that is a core fundamental expression of what we believe and what the Labour Party now does not offer in any shape, size or form. So there must be and there are many left-wing voters thinking, well look, come the next general election, it's a choice of Tory Party A, as in the real Tory Party, or Tory Party B, the Labour Party, which is virtually indistinguishable from the original, from the real Tory Party, chances are that Keir Starmer is going to be the next Prime Minister. Polls leave very little room for debate about that, that the Tories have just absolutely sunk themselves. So, given that is the situation, then possibly it is time to make a stand and say, look, Forget your, it might be a wasted vote and, you know, the, the sort of, it's not reality to actually vote for the stuff that you believe in, that you've got to somehow make compromises. The Green Party seem to be offering what many, many left-wing voters are actually looking for and maybe it's worth making a stand and saying, look here, we know that you're going to be the next Prime Minister, not through any merit of yours, not because you've earned it, but simply because the Tories are just imploded. But I am still going to make a point that I do not support you and I do not support the direction which you've taken the Labour Party. And Sack himself makes that point quite clearly that if you want to send a message to Keir Starmer, if you want to make it clear that you are not happy with his management of the Labour Party and the direction which he's taken the Labour Party, then you do have an avenue, you do have a vehicle to make that protest clear come the next general election. I'll leave the last words to Zach himself. So by voting Green, you are sending a very clear signal to the Conservatives, but probably more importantly to the Labour Party at this point, to say that you are not happy with the direction that Keir Starmer is going. You don't want him to U-turn on refugees. You want him to stand with striking workers. You want to make the point that there's no environmental justice without social, racial and economic justice too. And every Green vote is making that case. <laughs>